Hi, I'm Kim. I'm a student in Griffith University doing Bachelor of Design. I'm currently in my third year. Um, I don't watch the news regularly. You know, it just comes up to my news feed on Facebook. And I don't watch TV, to be honest. And yeah. Well, um, I definitely don't trust the news on Facebook, especially when it's just shared by a person. There are other accounts in Facebook that are verified, that share news that are like, you know, legit. But other cases, it's very hard to trust the news nowadays. Mm. Well, I'd be lying if I said that I could handle fake news very well. Sometimes um, there are so many cases that I've been misled thinking to believing that some things were true when in fact they were just created by someone, you know, just so they could have like the attention and the reaction they receive. Definitely. I'd say definitely. Um, teenagers nowadays, you know, just take things for face value and don't actually look at the context or the background and they just really like to share stuff so it can all it can affect them but also other people around them uh, question what is fake news true false whenever you see the art artifice phone I can use the Artivive app to scan pages and bring them to life. Okay, um, says here which news titles are fake. Guess then use the Artivive app to find out the answer. Okay, Pope Francis endorsed President Trump. Planet Nibiru is headed straight to Earth. What are reading women? Okay, ISIS, perfectly preserved ice age. 62-year-old python laid seven eggs despite not being a male for two decades. That's surprising. Well, first of all, I say the planet Nibiru. That was like a 2012 sort of thing. And that was already... Well, we're in 2020 now, so that one's fake. Um, Pope Francis endorsed President Trump. That seems very out of context, isn't it? Like, they have like very different personalities. So cross that out as well. ISIS set the Eiffel Tower on fire. I have literally not heard any other sources on that. Cross that out. <laughs> Lottery winning woman arrested for relieving herself <laughs> on her boss's desk. Um, that doesn't sound too fake. No. Okay. I'd say one, two, three. And... Yeah, I'd say three of these are fake. So, I'm gonna check the app now to see which ones are fake. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, I see, I see. So, apparently, these two are real. The rest is fake. And, um... I guess that that is really, really shocking, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'd say they're all shocking to begin with. Oh wait, there's um, there's an icon here as well. So whenever there is an icon here, I can use the app, see what it holds. Okay, so I'll do that. Oh my god. Okay. I love AR experiences. They're also, this is a pretty, like a very unique approach to, um, and oh my god, it's 3D as well. Oh, okay, that's really cool. So, um, I love how the use of the technology, you know, is being utilized for things like this. It's really good. It's really awesome. I like it. Can I have a copy of this, please? <laughs> okay, so check your sources for bias. Who is writing the article? Are they pushing one particular view? Are they presenting factual information to accurately present both sides? Okay. 
Oh, it's a video. A couple years ago, patent attorney Vanessa Otero ran into a problem that just okay. about anyone who's active on social ran into a problem that just about it. Oh, okay. Um, there's a information just by tapping the um, just by tapping the experience, the AR experience. Didn't know. So, when you see the news sources and their biases mapped out, it shows how careful we need to be. Oh, okay. So it's just like actual, you know, just some extra information for the book. So that's good. And okay, I really like this one. So it says think deeper. <laughs> if I do this. Different layers. Okay. That is really good. A very good typographic outcome. A very artistic one indeed. And I just like how it's 3D, <laughs> to be honest. Taken as a matter of course by everyone. So regular and complete a part of normal everyday living. I wonder if I turn this around. Okay, it's still tracking. That's really good. Was taken pretty much for granted. <laughs> Never thought of the rumbling presses that produced them. Completely oblivious to the fact. Okay, and the information. People used to pay for their daily news, pick up on their way to work. Oh, how times have changed, how do we have phones that comes on the internet? Well, yeah, I guess um, sometimes we, need, we miss the traditional stuff, I guess. Um, good journalistic practices, truth and accuracy, independence, fairness and impartiality, humanity and accountability. I don't really have any background knowledge aside. Um, if I could describe myself, I, I guess I'm just a person that sees news and doesn't really focus on it. So. Good, good information, you know, to have these in the book, ready for people, you know. Ooh, clickbait. Um, can I just... Okay. Clickbait has taken over the internet. That, that's true. <laughs> in a mad scramble to make money of ad revenue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Well, first of all... Again, the three D element. That's really good. that's really good. That's really cool. And yeah. Oh, okay. I love the detail of this. I love the artist artistic detail of this. It's just very well worked, and you know, coronavirus. Okay, something. I just heard first hand. <laughs> okay, I actually did not know about this. Like people just spouting facts out of nowhere. Although I know it, this this would have been a fake news because it just came from a user. But actually putting some facts that get people to you know sh share something. It's really misleading. Also, 293 and 33,000 shares. Is this actually real? Jesus Christ. Is the source credible? Would the publishing site meet academic citation standards? What is the, dom what is the domain name? What is the publication's point of view? Who is the author? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'd actually be looking more into the... That is also very confronting. Or like, just, you know, just very informative. Because uh, I usually look at the .com instead of .org websites. It's very um, relevant, actually. Like, just putting these articles here. And also the illustrations are very informative they're not just for aesthetic so instead of, um compared to my expectation actually that they're just going to be like some random aesthetic elements they're actually related to like this one is coronavirus they're actually related to the elements of the the text and it's very cohesive um a very good design outcome i guess 
because it communicates effectively what needs to be, what is, you know, what is intended. Um, well, actually, yeah, it did improve a lot. How, especially like on the websites, how I need to be looking at more on the .org sites instead of .com. And for Facebook, um, it's really mind opening how even the credible sites, you know, that, that have the the verification sign, can actually also post fake news. And you know, it's just really scary and terrifying that it's everywhere and people are still using it despite being just for me it's unethical really okay um, yeah I feel like this petition needs to have existed like before <laughs> like it shouldn't have been like a 2020 year to have a petition, this, sh um, this kind of petition should have existed like so many years ago. And yes, I would sign this petition because it needs the attention that it should. Fake news shouldn't exist, to be honest, you know? Like, just after reading the book, if companies need more money, if they need more attention, they could do it better when they're spreading the truth instead of the fake. Same with the companies, they should have, you know, be more ethical and I feel like ethics should be the one governing our society.